like the cop on Merseyside. We start the game. Miles has got it taken down by Gray. In the back, says the umpire. The umpires this afternoon, Farmer, Stevick, and Mitchell. Miles just having a terrific season. Through the centre circle, sends it inside the forward 50. Rebold is down there from behind, thumped away by Hobbs. Finds the ball on the deck, lays it off to Jonas under pressure out of the back pocket. Bounces just inside the field of play and stays in. Now a chance. Feeding it forward is Boak. Thought about getting it back. West off didn't give. Now he kicks towards half forward, ill directed, turning around and chasing Rance. Ball didn't do him any favours. Good strong tackle. Good strong defender. It was. I mean, Neek tried to bring him down. It was a David and Goliath, wasn't it? But Rance stood up brilliantly. Grimes, that foot is hot. You knew it would be early. Martin, Rance fending off. Two good efforts by Rance early. Miles, a second kick. Down the line. And ball <laughs> bouncing. I mean, there's the wind. Interesting. Cotchin's kicked in there, I reckon. Boat, I could be wrong, but it's a swirler. But I reckon it's coming from the north. Wines, Gray, fancy, well done. Still Gray, handball's good. West off, could kick a goal from here. He does. What a start. The X Factor, talk about the X Factor. Gray and West off, they are barometers. Oh, how good was that, Bruce? How hot was that footy? Just the pressure. In the end, Port Adelaide had to be so sharp with their gives. It was Robbie Gray, just the ability to break a tackle, create a few things and get the ball across to Justin Westhoff. And, Lee, that's a good finish and such a hot start to the game. Absolutely good finish. And uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, when they kicked the ball quickly out of the back half, uh, Ranch got it, but they couldn't clear it. That was the critical thing. Port Adelaide's forward pressure to uh, lock it in. Eventually get the ball back, created the goal. Well, the Tigers got the jumper, but Port got the jump. How's that for the first goal in the game? That was terrific. Rance did his bit, but the video in the war is coming off the ground. You can see what happened. Obviously a whack in the nose. Loby hesitates, wins it. Cochin, hurried kick towards half forward. Gordon comes to meet it. Martin too slow. That's incorrect disposal. Holding the ball. Take your pick. Ebert. Across half back there. Drives it out wide. Monfries meters in the clear. Not a lot of movement towards him. Pulls it back to Westhoff. Westhoff drops the mark. The good and the bad. Westhoff recovers. More good than bad so far. Looks inside the forward 50. Oh, what a penetrating kick. Schultz. Unstoppable in that situation. Well, Justin Westhoff, you said, Dennis, the good and the bad. He's good has been outstanding. His ability to kick that goal. What a tackle that was by Ebert there, just Dustin Martin couldn't get his foot to it, but for Westhoff to then break it open, composure, not give the handball, use the ball, beautiful to Jay Schultz. Just perfectly on his chest. Kick is on the way, wide of the mark, waiting and taking a good grab, Marich. Marich plays on out of the back pocket. Ellis, so much of the football this season, goes around the outer side, he'll direct it, O'Shea spilled it. Goes after it. Martin goes in. Foley on his knees. Martin with strength. A ball. The ball up. Schultz kick. Uh, Tim talked about the wind earlier. He will go left to right. It was a, a difficult angle there from that pocket. It's going to be tough today. That's going to be the harder pocket, I reckon. Little kick by Conker. Well done, Broadbent. Hartlett. Hawley picked it off. He's a good kick, but he's got nowhere to go. That's a clever kick, actually. Oh. Had he gone long, Jonas was all on his own, but he at least gave Griffiths a chance to make a contest. But O'Shea's mark was good. Danger. Hobbs waited. Gordon, who's been a fascinating inclusion late in the year. Back. Grimes. To tall for Greg. Martin labouring. Ned solidly. Well picked up by Wines. They're on indeed. Taken by Shaws. Open goal beckons. Beats the man, icing on the cake, second goal. Costly errors from both sides there. Caught initially, a couple of dangerous kicks. And then Martin seemed to be floundering a bit. He had to go a couple of times moments before. He was stumbling after that football. And that was a green light as far as Port were concerned. He's got the jelly legs, Martin, early. I reckon that too many... Martin looks like the jelly legs early. He's just not moving. Thank you. Time your job. 
this contest needs the little sky, probably the lighter sky. Martin's the big, strong guy. Knocked him off the footy. Shouldn't have happened. Need just wanted it more. Well, the Tigers have been winning clearances, but Port with a couple of goals. Gray taken down by Marich. Marich low, but it's going to be massive, isn't it? Up, yeah, really no, important, Jill, okay. between the two big play. fellas. Just to give their on balls first use. The Port Adelaide's intensity has been up. fantastic at the start. They've been clean with the footy. They've also been strong with their tackling. High contact, Richmond. Ty landed on him. So Miles, for the second time in the centre square, earns a free kick. He's been terrific. You see the wind hang on to this. So Cotchin won the toss and surprised he kicked to that end. Pollock, West off, just threw it away. Chaplin got him, but held on to him. Oh, we're going to be a three or four goal wind. It's quite strong to the uh, port end. So I reckon three or four goals advantage from what you could glean from being down there pre -game. 50 metres. 50 metres against you for high. 50 metres, take it. It's 50 metres. You're free. High. Yeah. No, that's against Boston on you. Yeah, is it my three? No, because you guys have already got the kick. It was off the ball. No, it was off the ball 50 metres. Time back on. So you hear the umpire explaining it. There it is, Nick Floston. Just giving that cheap little one away there. The wrist off waist one. Yeah, it's not going to hurt them. But that's where Richmond have got to stay strong. Port Adelaide have started well. They can't lose their cool, Richmond. Lose their discipline. It's what's got them into this final. They need to make sure they hold it together. Well, we had the Adelaide advertisers start the week with the Battle of Troy. We just saw Chaplin a moment ago. Richmond, holding, Richmond. Gets the free kick away. But it's Play now Cochin's free. In the short. One metre, Jay. One metre. Play on. Ellis. Back to Cochin. Driving kick. Gets there in time. Rance. Releases Hooley. Hooley releases the football, White arrives, former Tiger, steps around a couple, lowers the eye, short, precise, and cords. Ebert, famous names there, inside the forward 50, Schultz! You have this on the end of a couple of beautiful low passes, whenever you can lead into a low chest mark, they're the ones that are impossible defenders to spoil if they're... Uh... The, uh, that's the turnover. When you, uh, when you start a game as a forward, you couldn't ask for anything better than what Jay Schultz has got. Two absolute bullets, as Lee just said. It'd be big if he can kick another goal. Oh, haven't they come out smoking? Missed wide left last time. Steps inside the 50, allows for it this time. It's bending back, just misses. A lot too much. Didn't go as far. Well, he bats at 75% this year from set shots. He's missed both his today. Then. But it's going to be hard, the set shots today. There's so much breeze out there, Hooley. Right just, Lee, they need to settle the Tigers, don't they? They're, yeah. just, they're, they're just a little bit jumpy. Uh, yep. Not jumpy in the sense of an emotional yep. sense. Just They just haven't really got their rhythm. Griffiths, big fly, but... Uh, Tringove, such a pillar, Tringove. And there again, finds a forward 50 mark. And they play on, and Boak... Goals. Port Adelaide have got the jump. The captain gets the third. Well, it's a nightmare. Now it's a nightmare for Richmond. And what about the belief of Ollie Wines? In a big moment like that, it's his second season. You think, well, I'll just go back and take the set shot. But no, someone's coming past. First option straight away, just give give it to his captain, kicks the goal. Fast footy is what made this team a good team yeah, early this year. Quick, Fast quick. footy. But it was taking the punt to actually go to Wines in the first place. Go there quickly, find the uh, little bit of space in the forward 50. Just straight away here, Ollie Wines didn't hesitate. First option, got it to his captain, Travis Bogan. Isn't he a very happy man? It goes back to the centre. Richmond are 5-0 up in clearances, but they just have not capitalised on, on their good work around the stoppages. Looked high on trend go. Doesn't matter. Ray picks it up. Pollack. He can be destructive in this situation. Carries the ball. They stay off him. Looking to draw a man. Ran into another one. Got free. West off at his second. Kicks into an oncoming Tiger. Opportunity down in the pocket for White. It's close. I think it's good. It's an avalanche. Well, what a way to bring the crowd into it. <laughs> it was always going to be an intimidating home ground anyway. But when you have a start like this... Slamming on the first four goals, this crowd is up and about, and Port, they're thriving on the back of it. Do you, 
take chance. I mean, Gray, and then Pollock just took him on. He That's what he did. And the Richmond tackle was broken too. That's the uh, critical factor as well. But no, they take the game on. That's what makes them good. It's West off again. The, they just really attacking the ball. They're playing quickly. They're not holding on to the footy. They're playing instinctive, free-flowing, fast-moving footy. Of course, White, another one of those ex-Tigers. Cotchen. Well, they've just got a steady oh. ship to hit. This might help. Pitt have got a bad bounce. A real chance for the first time, maybe. Foley scrubs the kick forward. They get a stoppage, perhaps. No. Jonas, plenty of time. Pitt just didn't take the mark. Now, well done, Foley, getting down low. High tackle, Miles. Third, third free kick for Miles in the opening turn. Trying to play on now, outside the 50, an indecisive, in trouble, full revolution. Griffiths, 65 metres out, long bomb. Well, plenty of court players down there, off hands to the pocket. Homs goes after it, Edwards is there, ball rolls close to the boundary line, Pollock comes in, and between all of them, it's gone out of bounds. Not off the boot, boundary throw in. Well, that box would be working overtime, wouldn't it? I mean, but Richmond... Brains trust, so much to think about. They just, they'd love a timeout. <laughs> Gray. Shules, Ranch, Shules clever, Westoff. As Dennis said a couple of weeks ago, he's a unique footballer, Westoff. Need overruns it. Well done by Grimes to Hawley, to Miles, still getting it. To Chaplin, the biggest booze of the day he'll get. Gray in hard and late. Well done to Lidio, to Martin. Martin, clever enough to Grigg, back to Martin. Had a shaky start, Dusty, that one not 15. Deledio, back, Grigg, back, Martin, off a step to full forward. No one there. What about the relentless pressure of Port Adelaide? We've spoken about their willingness to play on and use the ball, but they are just at Richmond in all the defensive areas as well. Richmond turning the ball over. Great start by Port. Tick towards the outer side there. Feels Hartlett and Grimes. Wingard, that's good enough. Morris pops in front of him. Good tackle. Knocking the ball forward, Hartlett. Over at Rance, taken high. He's had a stellar season, but he's had a tough start to this one. They spread offensively so well, but uh, they also spread defensively to make sure they're getting over to pressure the opposition, doing it both ways. Rance in the bright sunshine, kicks down towards half forward, Jonas knocked it away, clever by Gray, fed forward by Jonas on the outer side. Justin! The mark is taken by Chaplin. So, Richmond just holding up here, well, Martin. Done. Just got to get the next goal, the Tigers. Well, this is where it's really important, the young leaders of Richmond, they've got to get control back of the footy, I don't mind this. Just control the footy for a little bit, take a bit of pace out of the game. The communication going on the ground right now from Cochin and Martin and Deledio is so important. Well, they've come from nowhere to make it here, so they know what adversity's like. But that one just picked off again, Hong. That's the mark, no more. He and Miles played a couple of games. Is that more in the back there? No, Hong. Played a couple of games together at GWS. Jonas, Gray, been very influential early. A little new turn, comes across the ground. Now, Need. Two on one, Montfrey's the other, takes it from Mead, goes short. Now Mead cruises past Boak, running down towards the 50. Beautiful kick! Couldn't draw it up any better. Don't know about that, Wingard chooses the right option. Pollock can turn around, go in and kick another one. Bang! <laughs> Remarkable scenes at the Adelaide Oval. This is wonderful running, risk-taking football by Port Adelaide. Well, there was a point there when the ball was... Uh, Gray got the ball in the middle of the ground. There was the Richmond defence was back, so he couldn't go, so he came out to the wing. But by the time the ball was ready to go into the forward 50 again, there's half a dozen Port Adelaide players, poor power players, that flowed in from the back half there, forward running. Just fantastic. Well, what a contrast. A live side of Putt Road. They're absolutely stunned in Melbourne right now. And I think we're all stunned one way or another. And here at the Adelaide Oval, well, the 40,000 Port fans are absolutely delirious and the 10,000 Richmond fans are 
They're thinking, what time's the plane leaving? Oh, not Lingy Bruce, he picked him to win by 42 <laughs> points. So you thought it'd be a big match. And well, they've yeah. certainly started that way, haven't they? They've just got all uh, the sentences. And what happens here, Lee? I mean, can you do anything from the box? Well, what you're trying to do is just make sure they stop scoring. It's not so much scoring yourself, but just make sure you just don't let the margin blow out further. Oh. Brilliant by Pope to Wingard. And then Wingard kicks it forward. Chapman's under pressure. Warren's Chapman didn't keep his feet. Warren's goals. They've got six. Not one, not two, three, four, five. They've got six. Well, I've got to feel it's a bad sign too because I thought the Chapman was a pressure fallover. When you when you're under pressure, it's amazing how players will stumble and he was. He was under a bit of pressure, but not that severe. If he kept his feet, there was no goal going uh, Port Adelaide's way, but uh, Chaplin just stumbled, and then and then the goal was open. So Richmond are feeling the pressure, Lee. They're really feeling it. Well, we talk about critical moments and important players in big games. Travis Boak, that handball there, just the sharpness. On the flip side, Chaplin falling over. Wines able to get in and kick an easy goal. Maybe knocked it down. Edwards out of the middle. Lets it down towards half forward. Again, plenty of defenders around the football. O'Shea back in the team this afternoon wide. Taken by Corns. Prods it down the line. White tracks it. Can't keep it in. This is already the biggest first quarter against the Tigers this season. We're halfway through the quarter. At that last centre bounce too, Port Adelaide went really small in their forward line. Chaplin couldn't find a matchup, so he actually went up to the wing. Hey Tim, Cochin kicked to the wrong end. Absolutely. I, I, I can't, I I can't not believe, believe it. I can't believe that he's kicked this way, given that when we're out on the ground, the wind was clearly going to the right of screen, and you, have, you wanted everything going your way if you're a Richmond player. And you talked to Damon Hardwick before the match on that, didn't you? So it's a remarkable decision. Anyway, here's Gray's kick forward. Mark taken by Grimes to Hurley. On the back foot, in more ways than one, Rance to Hurley. Well, talk about a test of character, sweeping the, sh the sheds and all the rest. Richmond now with a mountain climb. They got to base camp today, but the mountain's in front of them now. Funnily enough, Bruce, on that toss of the coin and which way you kick, in the days of now of Etihad Stadium, it's probably become a lot less focused on, but you're right, for some reason, Trent Cochin chose to kick into the wind and starts are important in finals. Confidence through the roof now for Port, not for Richmond. Rhymes around the other side, Cochin gets the ball across towards a teammate. Ritz hand pass though, slapped, and now needs away. Everything falling into place. Need the beneficiary running down towards the 50. Lines up, bacon goal square. How about this? This is breathtaking. Running power. We saw the Blake Carlton a few weeks back, and they did this to Carlton, where they just outran them. And Richmond are trying to get the extra number back, so they've kind of got that sort of goalkeeper. So there's always a Richmond player between the Port Adelaide player and the goal. Well, have a look at this. Newt just keeps going. Now, Rance has got the player back, but he just keeps going. Well, get over his head. Pretty simple, really. That's as straight as a die, too, isn't it? The breeze doesn't do much to that. It's a strong kick. No, exactly right, Dan. This is just, it's just speed. Whether it's in defence and attacking the Richmond players and putting that immediate defensive pressure on all their ball, all their ball movement, Port Adelaide have just started with blistering speed at the moment. The most remarkable opening term imaginable here. Boke. It's just a procession at the moment, kicking wide. I think we're all in a state of shock, Lee, aren't we? I mean, well, yes. I mean, just the Richmond will just really have good Port have been, but again. When Paul played Carlton a few weeks ago, they made Carlton look absolutely second rate, and Carlton haven't been in bad form, so they're capable of doing this. Are you stunned, Ling? Oh, I'm stunned. <laughs> You've got to be stunned by this. This is uh, this is unbelievable. Uh, the way that they've attacked Fine. Richmond, the way they've pressured okay. Richmond and caused them to turn Thanks, the ball over, but then just their confidence and their fluency with their ball movement. Kenny would have to be a very, very happy man right now. He knows it's not over. He knows anything can happen in finals but he's got to be happy. He'd want the siren to sound, wouldn't he? <laughs> Wines from the pocket. Oh, no. Across. And still in... No, it's a... Post. Hit the post. So a boundary throw. Post, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
43 to 0. Dennis mentioned the biggest score against Richmond in an open turn. Port Adelaide's biggest first quarter score for the year by far as well. Best thing going for the Tigers, they've got a lot of time in which to catch up. Tossed in alongside the behind pass. Nobody touched the football. Rance punches it. Only as far as Wines. He's been very lively. Taken down. Backhands it out. Miles has got it now. Richmond! Richmond. It'll be a free kick to Miles. Good way to start it, though, Dennis. Jack Rewalt, that tackle on Ollie Wines. Sometimes that's just what you've got to do. You go back to the absolute basics. You get an opportunity to tackle an opposition player. You have to nail it. You have to make it a way to win the ball back. And then they can go into a bit of this and try and control the footy. Holy back to Miles. Not 15, says the umpire. Hooley to Miles, racking up the possessions. Hooley. Gets away. Well, the pressure was good enough, even affected the kick, but it's still, by happenstance, went on the chest of a player, thought a field that was Conker. Conker gives it across, and the kick goes in from Hooley. And the first real chance was touched. Goes back to Conker. Conker low, kicks the right, kick is a goal. Well, they've got a... That was a good kick, because... You kick it in the air, it's just going to grab hold of it. He got it low, he was able to get it from the outstretched fingers. And the Tigers, thankfully for all their fans and for the match, are on the board. Terrific finish by Reese Conker. As you said, Bruce, important they get on the scoreboard just to calm those nerves a little bit. Kenny not happy. He knows that every moment counts. He knows that every score counts. He doesn't want this team dropping off at all. It's been it unbelievable start but there's a long long time to go in this football game there was Longstone running through there and not Conker a couple of those numbers on the back on the sash, there goes Miles tries to give a hand pass out and they go forward again the mark is taken down there by Monfries Monfries is about 45 metres out Three plays six. Six minutes out from quarter time. Subs this afternoon more and Pettit. On freaks. Normally a sharpshooter. This one's on the way and it's beautiful. Gun barrel straight. That's amazing accuracy. It's one thing to generate the shots, and obviously they've had nine of them, but actually just be able to kick eight goals one so that you just. Your, your work is actually just backed up by scoring accuracy and the margin just gets bigger and bigger. Well, they're finishing. I mean, not only they're playing well, they're actually finishing. That's right. When they've got chances, they're finishing. Huge now for this man here, Trent Cochin. He's gone forward. You can see him on Carlisle. He's had the six possessions, he's had the three clearances, but he needs to now influence his team, hit the scoreboard. They've tried something different. Damien Hardwick and the Richmond coaching staff. So Delidio, good hands. Floster, very short. Revolt. Held up by Honch. Not coming out. Now it is. White, even like a battering ram. Well done by Gordon. Back to Rance. Rance hooking back. Good kick in the end. And a mark taken by Flossen. So there you go. Might be at the wind here. Uh, it'll be just a 45 metre shot. Into what we think's a breeze. But actually, so far they seem to have been, on the rare occasions forward, they seem to have been able to get some distance. Elevation, I reckon, might be the key. Yeah, here because. Yeah. Individual goal scorers, conquer the goal scorer for the Tigers. Let's have a look. Holding up. See it there? So you notice how yeah, just how that it was well within kicking distance, so clearly the uh, the wind's gonna make it hard to be kicking long range down there. This is Broadbent, brings it in. Straight up the middle, daring kick. Jonas Ebert, he's away now. One bounce, his second, nobody inside the forward 50. On the move is Schulz, doing well, Rance, got a fist in there, first to arrive, Gray, bumped off it by Morris, diving in after it even, comes to Morris, hand passes across, looking for support, 
Not much on offer. Plenty of heat in there. Comes back to Rance Gregg. Now Hurley under pressure again. Manages to get the kick off. That avoids half forward. Punch and a chance. Bounces obligingly. Lays it off to Martin. He's been quiet. Looks down towards half forward. Little chip. Gordon in space. Man on down towards the 50. Can't get it there in time. Goes long down towards the pocket. Revolts in front. Homsch over the top. Revolt trying to hack it forward. Nothing doing. Carlisle comes away and finds D. Gee, Richmond did really well a moment ago because Port Mahomes was the first time they've actually been able to stop a forward thrust like that. So a little victory for them. Needs kick wide. Well done, Wines. West off. They're playing with such daring port and, and, and high, really high um, intensity, but also taking chances, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. We saw from that last kick in risk. They're just up the middle, really risky, but that's why they're playing well. We can see Jay Schultz really hurting himself there, but he hopefully will be okay for Port Adelaide. He does throw yeah. himself about like he done he? I mean, just about every week you see him in that sort of situation. Conquer well done. Foley to Martin, looks back towards the middle. It's a clever kick, actually. Gordon sees a chance and takes it. Smothered off the boot there by O'Shea. That was good defence. Uh, wants it. Yeah, they've been so energetic this afternoon, Port. When you go out at the base of that pack, laser sharp. Knocked down by Loby. Both knocked it forward. Wingard tackled again. Same situation. Separate. Yeah, yeah. 49, that's right, 49. Well, Plays seven. Still over three minutes remaining in this turn. Marriage locks up. Loby wins the tap, nevertheless. Trying to get away there is Pollock. He's claimed and taken down by Ellis. Tim, what's that Richmond bench been like this quarter? Is there panic down there or are they staying pretty calm? No, they're staying pretty calm, Lingy. They're just trying to shuffle the pack as much as they possibly can and find a winning combination out there. Pollock, well done. Boat. Corns, West off, such a part of that opening foray, West off, wasn't he? Kick to Monfries, one of the eight individual goal scorers now. Boats on in the centre here, if he can get it there. Still may, still may. Go short, Corns. Push, 50 metres, 50 metres. Too late. Just needing the back. Yep. So he's the lone premiership player from 04 Corns. Mark's here. One of the four players who played mate. in the 07 grand final. What a player he's been. Absolute champion of the Port Adelaide Footy Club. To the pocket, Gray a target. Well done, Morris boundary throw in. So yep. Port Adelaide with eight first quarter goals against that man's team. He played with Kane in that premiership in 04. No contact. No, no, I don't want to Morris see that. Morris is getting a free kick. Come on, stay there. No, no. Against Gray. Boundary on players still have the footy. Move it on. Play on. So, Richmond electing to go into this breeze, and the rest, ben as Griffiths, they say, is history ben so far. Holding. Your kick, your kick, holding around the waist. Free kick is going to Griffiths, who was very good against Sydney early last week. Just talking about that toss of the coin, obviously not the captain's decision, I would have thought. It would have been very much done in concert with the coach as the ball goes down towards half forward. Well, just one man's decision, the coach. There's Revolt, it was a clever mark. He was surrounded, sends a probing ball inside the forward 50. In front, Hartlett went to ground, Boak. He's been good with his hands, brilliant. Hartlett goes to the outer side. Wines had his moments in this term as well. Now breaking deeper down the ground, he even spilt the mark. Breaking deeper was Schulz. That's a terrific win by Rance. Gets the player and the ball across the boundary. He's expecting a free kick, nothing doing. He left his man, he came up and he tackled him just as well. Yeah, great call, Dennis, because that was a brave effort from Rance. That was a goal over the top to his opponent, Schultz. Fantastic team play. And he's the one guy you don't want to fumble against, isn't he? Because he makes them stick and he's the athlete. Hold in the man, Richmond! So Tigers... Mark Well, they're not steady in the ship, but it's just a little bit of parity the last few minutes at least. They're getting their hands on the ball. Ship has set sail. Yeah. Strong lead from Delidio. And a boundary thrown, so he gets teammate right with him. On that point, the majority of times I think the captain just decides which way. Because your coach is not normally involved in that decision. I, 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 I reckon it gets down to lack of local knowledge. 
today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have spoken to a coach once about no. the throw. Really? Boundary throw in. Perhaps some West Perth captains don't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Hand pass towards the line from Pittard, taken by Greg. Sends a high one down towards full forward. Hartlett. Oh, what a good grab. Eyes only for the football. What a fine player he is. Move it on, play on. Comes to our broadcast side. Bundled out of it with Schulz. Missing the mark, Rance. Chance for Gray. Met solidly by Rance. In the meantime, Hooley's escaped with the footy. He's had a lot of the ball in the first quarter. Kicks to half four. Tigers with numbers. Hold the arm, Brett Validio. Hold the arm. So against Ebert. So Richmond, one last chance. A goal here would make a massive difference to them. And that last goal can give you something to think about at quarter time. But Conker, who is the goal kicker. Opening term, so he sets it up. Marich sets himself. Lobie's at the back. Go far from Foley. Well done by Jonas. Trengove took the bump. Wines, both, and put. Dodge. Well, it's not really a bullet, is it? What a remarkable opening term. Hardly seen anything like it ever. Standing ovation here. It's the best opening quarter for Port Adelaide ever in finals. So they need a quarter time by seven goals over Richmond in the elimination final before a full house here at the Adelaide Oval. They uh, just need to do it to two or three goals at a time, so it is certainly gettable, but, well, it's going to be a massive effort if they do it from here. And winning the toss was a loss, eh? Start in the second term, then. Let's see what they can do on the breeze, the Tigers. So much to do. Marich goes up and taps it down. Edwards pulled off the kick. Bit of a fumble from Martin. Hartlett goes in. Wins a very hard ball. Gray in trouble. Spotted a man, though, getting across the wines. Now they're free. Wingard, forward of the wing, looks inside the forward 50. Another incisive kick. Edged out of it, Schulz. In goes White with a strong tackle. Grimes flailing away. Dragged out of there was Ransford almost. But we've got a whistle. Take a good umpire to get the right decision in there. Richmond had 12 free kicks in the opening term to three from Port Adelaide, so you don't normally see such a discrepancy. So the Port fans will be baying for one, but it didn't look like any of them weren't there, so just the way it unfolded. So O'Shea cutting off the Newman kick. Just fascinating to see the response of both the teams here in the second term. Huge fly, and Marich holds up. Shules again, so reckless almost, Shules, in terms of his own safety, oh, isn't he? Yeah. So Marich in the back half, kicks to centre wing. O'Shea controls it to his own advantage. It goes out of bounds. The hands bring it in. They got the ball in the back 50, Richmond. They had to kick the ball down the line. They couldn't spread the space to take it to the open field, which Port does so well on offence, so uh, they need some runners to get there. A blazing start by Port then, throwing in Loby through the legs of Wines. Belidio, little one-two there with Foley, missed the target. Backed up though by Ellis. Ellis hooks it down towards half forward from behind a big lead. Jonas did well. It's been good back there and now 50. Belatedly knocked away. I'm glad he picked it up. And he was the spare then, Dennis, Jonas. Taking Jack a really good, strong grab, setting up really deep. Obviously, Richmond King with the win now, making sure that he had it covered. Really well played. It's so not such forward. a good kick. Oh, out of bounds on the floor. So the former skipper equals Kevin Sheedy today with games played for Richmond. 251, Chris Newman. Good bloke to be alongside, isn't it? Ball gets to the back. Jonas, broad bent, conquer, boundary throw in. So seven goal margin, damage done really early. Boke, such a big part of that opening term, onslaught. Hitting the board himself. As Dennis said his handball was so incisive in that opening term. Now you're cutting the lines. West off, held up. They've been able to slow the game down, Richard. I reckon that was the first thing they had to do, slow the game down. Now, let's see if they can build something from here. Boys, come on. A lot to worry about. 
marriage perhaps. And his feet was Miles, tackled by Ebert. Ebert's been down on form in recent weeks, but he's been fired up today. A lot of run. Coming from the young man drafted to the West Coast Eagles. Back in town, been a star since he came back. A succession of hand passes again. Wayne's got it from Wingard. Shaw's comes back to Wingard. Wingard under pressure. Kicks to a dangerous situation. Dangerous in terms of position. The Tigers haven't covered, at least in the short term. Morris went to ground. Montrez wins it back. Snaps. Oh, that would have been a killer. The first goal into the breeze. If Ward could get that, that would really knock the stuffing out of the Tigers. She wasn't that clever by Wingard there. Had no one to go to. He just kicked a bit of a chaos ball, but made sure that it hit the ground. Didn't just kick it back to the Richmond opponent. Meant that it bounced around a little bit and allowed time for the troops to arrive. So Newman and then Marich just hacking forward. And see the breeze, the difference in the, the two ends. O'Shea on the up, Carlisle had to hold firm, did well, Carlisle. And kicking wide, Gray. Well done, Edwards. I mean, Edwards, he was out. Oh. And a boundary throw. So Gray just slipping there. Had a good year, Edwards. So much of this season for Richmond's been about back into the season, players. Best footy late in the year. I don't know if you just picked up on the uh, umpire mics there or not, but uh, umpires talking to each other about Kane Corns on Cochin, making sure they're keeping a close eye around the stoppages. There's no holding on going whatsoever. Well, Corns got his own ball there, kicks it up towards the wing, it runs on. Lions tracks it out. 50 plays seven, early going second term, first elimination final. Edwards takes a break. One leader! It was a hot day. They're ringing the changes. Uh, watch that interchange count as well. Lobby beaten that time. Griffiths knocked it down. Delidio, Hooley, Grimes across the body. Foley in front. Did well, and now some run for the Tigers. Conker, Martin. Had the quiet start, Martin, but he built towards the end. That's a brilliant looking kick if it just sits. Now, Hooley's got a good leg. White's quick, though. That's the problem. Free kick, White. Short to Hartlett. Well, just maybe luck of the bounce, don't know, but Hooley just felt if it sat, he was in that range where he could have hammered one home. It's the first time Richmond have gone to the open field this. Uh, they've had the ball mostly, but it's... Mark! They've been just kicking down the line, down on this... Uh, in front of Camden. Monfries courageously, and then Ebert. What's hard forward. Mark is taken by him and the veteran. Reset it, reset it. Your kick again, Chris. Chris blood rule. Your kick again, for, there's a blood, blood rule. rule. Take, take it, Chris. Chris, just come around here. Not the first Low, time for Morris. Yes, blood rule, just wait. Low. That was a Monfries mark, wasn't it? And Morris collided with him. Yeah, Chris, just wait for the whistle. Thank you. Take Monfries your time. took a while to get up. That's good advice from the umpire, Steve Morris. Told to take his time as he comes off the ground. I know it's early, Dennis, but I reckon the one thing we've seen, it is hard to kick goals, so they've poured have had yep. The, yep. the different... Here we go. Thanks, mate. Just let us know when he's off, because he's still in. So the, the, the challenge for Port once they get the ball to the centre line is very different in this quarter than what we saw in the opening turn. Great courage for both players. Chip, go on. for his eyes only for the ball. New Morris was coming. Yeah, mate. Newman is going, drives it, down avoids half forward, big pack at the drop, over the top is Jonas, Miles did well, stood his ground, Griffiths to Foley, got them in the air, Hooley, charging in was Jonas, he's over the football, and we've got a ball up to left half forward. Well, the good thing is that Richmond, they've managed to just get this back to a little bit of an arm wrestle at the moment. The question is which way that arm wrestle is going to break, they, Richmond have got to make sure they score next. She both was good there, Lingy. I mean, belting forward to Pollock. But you just feel the first goal. It's just, it's just crucial. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's, they're not one like to go and kick eight goals in the second quarter, Richmond. So, yeah, they've just got to try and slow it down and just make it an arm rest and see if they can just gain two or three goals in the quarter. That's really the uh, most realistic way of getting back in the game. Boak again able to get a handball away, even though he was tackled. Pollock get it from Hartlett. And then on the left... That kick cut off by Grimes, shouldn't take the mark, Wingard. Now Richmond might be a chance. Martin, can it open up for them? He's a good kick, Martin, and he gets it out wide. Now, this guy can really run, but he didn't take it, Gordon. 
This is a big bit of play here. Homch, he'll want to slow it, he'll want the boundary. Martin, uh, rather Gordon's got him. Wins the foot, he gets to Foley. Foley scuttles yeah. away, kicks inside the forward 50. Going back is Carlisle. Revolt did well enough. Revolt reverses the situation, got in front momentarily. Carlisle with the poise, comes to Hartlett. White is on in the middle. He wants the footy. Eventually it goes there. He was there for an eternity. Now he plays on. He's a speedster. Player goes down in midfield. Mitchell. Couple of games going on here. It's a free to boat. Yeah, Boat's getting a free. free. Kick early to Port Adelaide in the centre of the ground. No, no, it's Port Adelaide earlier. I expect that's Richmond trying to stop Boat running to space. That's the problem. Whenever there's a spread on, the Port Adelaide players just keep getting into space. Yep, so he was wrestled to the ground boat when he was trying to get going. And he kicks it high and wide. Oh. And Pollock ran into it and took the mark. So Port with a real chance here. Westhoff running hard, takes the mark. Well, tough pocket today. He is mercurial. He's likely to dock. So here's the free kick on boat. Off the ball. You'll see it in the centre, just to the left. Held up, taken to the ground. 15 seconds gone. Uh, this can't tell you how difficult this kick is with the breeze today from this pocket. There you go. Good look that half. No, no, that's Westoff. That's Westoff. Good forward observation. I think it just said, Mac, he, uh, he knew what was going off the wind, so he just steered a little low one in. Didn't, yeah. didn't get the ball up into the, into the breeze, just tried to drill it low, and, the, and where the breeze doesn't really uh, affect the flight of the footy until very late. Lee, he had a, a good 07, a terrible grand final or something. God, he's a good player. Yeah. He? <laughs> very flexible, go forward, go back. If they're in trouble, they put him loose, man, in defence. Very good player. Great finish by Justin Westhoff and Jonathan Brown. We know he's a champion and he's absolutely spot on there. The win playing a major factor in today's game. Westhoff making it look easy, but Port Adelaide's start was outstanding. Tigers on the ropes at the moment. The tackle by Miles. Gray went to the deck. Miles again tries to dig out a hard ball. Rick does with the kick down to a tarp ball. The mark is taken by Jonas. Immediately goes to that outer side as we see it. Opportunity for Corns went down to the half volley. Fought back, did well, deflected to O'Shea. Now Carlisle springing his step, sends it up towards the wing, peeling off Grimes. He's in trouble now. He won't catch him. Leads away. Grimes is trying hard. Needs hand pass in over the field. top of Monfries. Downfield, it's going to be downfield. Free. It could be twin downfield. Angus, Angus, your, your free kick for downfield. Okay. I Land. presume Land. that Grimes Land. eventually got to him. Following the yeah, ball. It so it's relayed to Montfries. Deep in the pocket. Free, okay? That must be a terrible feeling. Grimes knows the ball's got past him. Time, 15 seconds and he knows who's back there. Exciting young player need Montfries. Well, this would be a dagger. They're on the ropes, the Tigers. Montfries from about 40. This is to the near side. Very different sort of kick to Westhoff. Westhoff kept it low, didn't he? So for Damien Hardwick, a remarkable effort to get this team into the finals with the nine consecutive wins, but uh, it, just, it is a nightmare start. So a lot of footy still to be played. Deledio taking some dash and running hard. Hey, Richmond! So against Lobie on Marich. So Marich with that step. Port with numbers. Broadbent at the side. Sport can go out. So Port with a chance here. Broadbent short to Tringove. When they had the slump, it was Tringove and Carlisle's injuries. Oh. I think that cost them. That's a terrible kick, though. And now he opens it up for Hurley. Hurley lowers the eyes. Had to. No Tigers deep, at least initially. Griffiths has got it. It's about 60 metres out. He'll kick from about 65, so... He kicks cool. about that far with a bit of breeze behind his back. Dennis, I yeah. suspect he was just about... Uh, he is a long kick, isn't he? It's tell us something about the breeze. It's on the way. Oh, look at that. Distance, no problem. Just missed by about a metre. That was impressive. 
as I said, some good minutes early last week against Sydney when they set up their victory and now brought them to bring it in. He was inside the centre square when he kicked that ball. <laughs> no problems at all. So a bit of both there, the breeze, but he is a prodigious kick. So Port just dodged the bullet there. Ellis, Rance, just had to backtrack Rance. Good smother by Holmes. Gee, that's a brilliant pick up by Pollock. They're running Bokes in concert with him. Pollock, a second bounce, a third. How dangerous will he be? Kicks to centre half forward, should be pinged off. Was back to Wingard, back to Pollock. He'd be exhausted. Looks up. Brilliant. Oh. How good was that? Oh. <laughs> Gee, he can run Pollock. He gives the ball and runs and he just keeps carrying the footy. Been a fantastic pick up on the Brisbane Lions this, uh, this season and he had a lot of targets on the way in. He was able to find Gray, but uh, Need was just hanging around in space. He was ready to be used as well. The Port Adelaide really willingness to run. 12 running bounces to one so far this game. They're just taking it on. They're taking that ground every opportunity they can. Again, not an easy shot into the breeze. He missed a couple last week. Stellar season. Coming back. Looking OK. No missing. Just shaving it. Scything runs by Pollock. I think they're impressive. Stay there. Pick five in the 2010 draft. Thanks, Trav. Only 16 games in three seasons Stay with there. Brisbane. Had a few Lights. injury problems. This is Delidio. Ken Hinckley was very eager to get him. Dennis, he loved him. He wanted to get him to Port Adelaide. See why. Kick goes to the outer side. Griffin's over the top. Montreux tracks it. Picked up by Wines, though. Montreux runs on. Kick inside the forward 50. Boak had it punched away by Bachelor. Ball stays in. Well done by West off the Boak. Over the head of Mead. Has a second chance. Tackled high. Contact put That was courage by the little guy. He puts his... No one's told him he's little, as they say, Dennis. He just goes it's like he weighs 100 k's. Well, somebody better tell him he weighs less than a cheeseburger. That's your line. He's a goer, isn't he? He's unbelievably impressive today. He's the only... And his fifth disposal, his impact on the game, I think, has been uh, much, much more than those he's, he's one of those players who terrifies the opposition, doesn't he? Yep. So, in he comes, 25 metres out, and he puts it through. He's got two, and Richmond have got deep, deep trouble. And again, Port's resurgence needs been the late inclusion this year. I mean, he's come back, yeah. and then... He, he makes them a better team. We saw that against Carlton the other night, didn't we, a few weeks back. And again, he, he provides that speed that we've been talking about all game. Whether, it, as Lee just said, not necessarily in the number of possessions he gets, but the speed to close down the ball carrier for Richmond, the speed just around the contest to always be buzzing around and create that uncertainty. He's been very good. So Port Adelaide get the opening two goals. So he's played the last four matches. He played in round 11 need and then the last four. So it took him a long time to get back into this team this year. And he's been very important. Trengove in the ruck. Marich won it. Wines down and dirty as he's so good at. Gray gets it from Boat. Gets it to O'Shea. O'Shea runs a fair way and then hooks back. Asks a lot of Hartlett. Grimes takes a good mark. Wasn't a great what kick from O'Shea. Martin. Oh. Dangerous kick. Wingard getting the scraps at the moment. Wingard, but they're good scraps. Gets it to Monfries. Now, Monfries had need in the pocket. Not sure if he can get the trip here into the breeze. He's another one. Well, you just watch for the late lowering of the eyes here from Monfries. You can see his eyes just darting around. He'd know that it's a tough kick. He's another poor player. No continuity this year for him, but he's just starting to get some games under his belt. And just see the breeze there. Tim, is, is it as strong as it was when we were down there a couple of hours ago, the wind? Well, it's still uh, quite blustery. It blows up at different times, and obviously it's a lot more powerful than it is at other times. And just talking to Robbie Gray before the game, he came out onto the ground, and I was standing next to him. He said it's really difficult because one, sometimes you think you've got to hang it out to the left, and it goes the other way, depending on you know, what part of the forward line you're in. Ellis to the wing, falls in front of the pack. Chaplin. Oh. Bad press earlier in the week. Grimes towards half forward. Still Tracking made. it back is Carlisle. He's got plenty of help. Broadbent just lurking behind. 
spears it into Wingard. He's becoming very influential now, finding so much of the footy. Defensive side of the wing. That's a dangerous kick, though. Martin behind. It hasn't been his day. That was good, though. Ellis slipped over. He's been quiet. Got a few buddies. Martin comes back, wins a hard ball, in trouble Foley. Hooley emerges with it now. Lost own, runs on. Not used by Chaplin. Went to Hooley, back to Martin. Well won by Montreux. Pittard, Wingard, under the pump, chose the right yep. option. Well making something out of nothing. Westhoff sent it forward, now they'll get a goal. Well done, Hartlett. Westhoff, Gray, and into an open goal. Finished off by Shaws. Fantastic bit of play oh. by Hart. You can see yeah, there. Lee just took the hard knock. And he knew that's what he had to do. As long as he actually drew the contest, he had the port numbers around him. Once they won the contest, and look at the flow of jumpers going forward. It's just a just a, a surge. It's unbelievable he just got there. And Dennis Port Wingard was really important earlier in that chain. He's becoming influential. Hart was magnificent there. Just look at the weight of numbers, and so clever by Justin Westhoff. Didn't try and take possession, just got it forward and attack on the football from Hamish Hartlett. That's finals football there. Great team goal by Port Adelaide. So 10-goal margin now. Boke out at the centre. Monfries have been very good. High contact. Steve, stay there. So Morris don't play on. Getting him high. And Monfries off a step to full forward. Westhoff. Couldn't take the mark. Flosten, wide to Ellis. Terrific season, Ellis. He's in the oh, All-Australian nominee list of 40. Finds Gordon. Stay there. Oh, you just wonder what they can do here, Richard. How can they salvage something from the wreck? It goes down towards half forward. Hold Hold the arm. Well, it's going against Revolt. He and O'Shea were behind the two. Competing for the footy initially. Now O'Shea's away. Little off the ball, but they'll Play take on. them all. The kick count does favour the Tigers. O'Shea, like him, as a robust defender, goes to the outer side. Westhoff. Having a good game. He started brilliantly. He hasn't taken his foot off the pedal. Boke. One metre! Now. Thank you. This is war the other side, so the sub is on, he comes back to O'Shea. Play, Play on. You, mate, you. Short one, Corns. Thanks, Ray. Corns, the defensive side of the wing, Ebert. Five metres! Amazing how up. often Thank those you. two team up, Ebert. Inside the centre square, looks towards half forward. Gee, they're playing with confidence, two on one. The two prevailed, Gray beaten there by Cotchard who knocked it forward got it back from Griffiths, now he works a little one-two with Gordon, bounces it down towards the 50, Cotchard the high ball, he's trying to bounce it out of bounds but the wind grabs it and floats it out of bounds on the fall I think it might be Matt White that's gone from the ground uh, Dennis, so Moore is out there do, do you know Tim what's happened with the sub with Port? I'm still trying to work it out Bruce, uh, it looks like it is White actually yeah, it looks like it's White. He's had a groin problem White coming in but so more on the ground. Not much wrong has gone for Port in this first half. Lobie belting forward. Deledio and Trengove. Deledio trapping it. Trengove. Wingard. Wingard and Foley. First final for Foley. Ed. And Wingard wraps him up. Oh, You'd have to assume that that's a reoccurrence of that injury, though, Bruce, with Matt White, because it's too early on in the game. I know yeah. it's 63 points to margin, but that's definitely very early to be putting somebody... Oh, yes. Into the red vest, yeah. As Bruce said, it does seem like it would have got more on the ground. Now, Westhoff is put oh, down. Taking high. Actually, Matthew, you got the free kick. Lobie's you got gone the free in, kick. so was Gray. They need to be you careful here. Kick. Don't give another one away. Don't give I another think one away. They should be pretty confident they'll be playing Stay next week. Stay with him. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Meantime, Jonas Let has got go. the football. Port anxious to get on with it. Why not? They're running red hot. Here's Ebert. Cards are kicked down towards half forward. Shaws will get a free. Okay, One of the more remarkable games of football is. This time in Hardwick, thinking. <laughs> you see a game like this and you think, no, how, how quick are they? 
and how strong Adelaide they're running power, just apart from their skills. And Richmond are just trailing the ball in the open space constantly. <laughs> and that leaves about as obvious as yeah, the kick as you can possibly get. I'm going to run into a chest mark. I'll just grab him. It's sort of like... He's like give up. <laughs> this is one of those days where a team is having its best day against a team that's having its worst day. It doesn't happen all that often, but the stars have aligned this afternoon. And Port Stars are running riot. Oh, well, having said that, Shell's into the man on the mark. <laughs> be a good clear boy. And socket off the ground, goes towards the outer side. Getting down low, Griffiths, confronted by O'Shea. As I mentioned, he's back in the team, and he brings a presence. For sure. Well, Port Adelaide, after round 14, they were first on the ladder, and Richmond was 16th. You feel like we're going back, don't you? to those days, the way they're playing today. Gray brilliantly. Pollock goes for goal. Close. It's home again. Yet another one. Well, that sums it up. Gray's little give, but Pollock's running power. He's actually like... Uh... Uh, White's got the little egg breeders, so he's got the really quick legs, and Pollock is just a long strider, so you know, he doesn't look like he's going quickly, but he just covers the turf, and well, against the wind, he's uh, lobbed them from the 50 metre line, so... Uh, I just heard Ross Lyons, that? Lee Ross Lyons turn the sprinklers on at Super yeah, Echo right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just look at that sensational play from the stoppage. Robbie Gray, quick hands. Jared Pollock, brilliant goal on the run. We've spoken about it all day. It's that running power of Port Adelaide that just keeps getting better and better. Lobby, stolen away though by Edwards. Looks inside the forward 50. Reading it brilliantly and getting back to the square is Jonas. He was peeling off his man with confidence that time. They're rippling confidence. This is Hodge. Port's biggest winning margin in a final is 87 points. They've done it twice, both times against North Melbourne. The ageless corns to the outer side. Runs free behind the pack. Newman lays it off. Brig. Deledio haven't called his name enough. Lost out in the tackle. Kicks it inside the forward 50. Cotchen about 60 metres out. Kicks it to a contest. Hartlett won it. Well played by Miles. Chaplin went back. Crowd identifying him quickly enough. Grimes has got it. Got it from Morris, who's bandaged, and sends a long ball in, but not a good one. Jonas filled the spot again. Didn't take the mark. Martin, one of the two tacklers on him. Ball not out, ball up. He's read that well, Jonas. Has to the whole quarter he's been playing. That spare man in defence, but he's constantly getting on the end of the right Richmond back. kick. The spare's been influential, hasn't it, though? Yeah. Just keep turning the ball over, Richmond. Shepard, Richmond. Just here. Thanks, Ivan. So the Tigers with a little bit of relief here. So you see the mullet, the breeze with the mullet here. So against Sloby for the early contact, the Shepherd. There, there. And I look at the ruck free kicks and I'm not quite sure what's what. They were part of the game. I didn't quite understand ruck free kicks, those grappling ones. So Marich keeps it low, gets the goal. So Tigers get their second, first for this quarter. Port player, Big Ivan, as we know, he's been influential in this run to the finals for the Tigers. When him and Alex Rance came into this team, they lifted every other player on the field for the Tigers. Been very good, but I get the feeling that even he can't lift this Richmond team to a win today. But he's going to keep on trying. That's the one thing you always know with him. Quite a contrast, like the scoreboard itself, 77 to 14 on the left, Adelaide Oval, rollicking crowd, doom and gloom at Pump Road. Rucks go at it, Loby decisively, Cotchen kicks it down towards half forward, Marich comes at the footy, doing well with Hodge. Ray under that loose ball, finds a way through on the wing. Folks in trouble, taken to ground, but they've got the numbers. It's like a wave, the power. Opportunity for Hartlett, trying to fend off borders. Hooks it back around the corner. Oh, brilliant! Brilliant to Wingard. Check, check. He just followed it through down the middle, Wingard, but really it was Hartlett had to maintain possession. Just burned Grig off. That's 
just the speed and run has been uh, outstanding. I'm not, I'm not sure they're the type of team point you know you want to be playing loose man defence against because it just allows them to get the running game going. I know it happened probably when they were six goals down, Richmond, but still. So wonderful that. I mean, he had to fend the player off, a would-be tackler, and had the concentration in his mind to know where Wingard was going. But Sat Nav. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered uh, which way they kicked in that first quarter, Port Adelaide. They're kicking goals at both ends. And as you said, Lee, the ability for Hartlett to maintain possession of the ball, fend off the tackle, and also get that little kick inside, just brilliant footy. When you see them like this, you feel like they, they're capable, don't they, you? They have. Well, we saw them a few weeks ago against Carlton, mate. They can just blitz them when they're on. Well, we see there Chad Wingard running with Robbie Gray. That's where he came from. So the whole time that Hartland had this ball, Chad Wingard just tracking along with him in that corridor. But the vision there of Hartland to be able to spot him up and the skill to hit him. Block, Great Port play Adelaide. by Port Adelaide. Play on. Gee, that was such a good illustration there, what we saw. Brilliant, wasn't it? So Ebert gets the free. Moore, who's the sub on. Pollock, look at him with pace to Ebert. Ebert keeps it low. <laughs> no, <Nah>, unrealistic. <laughs> trouble, trouble with Monfries. He did something unrealistic against the Crows a couple of years ago, no, didn't right. he? He kicked, he kicked a remarkable yep. goal. That's why the umpire didn't say they're totally unrealistic. <laughs> Stay out there. There's Rebolt. Short one inside the centre square. Chaplin. Stay out. A few admirers here this afternoon. That's a good kick. Well, no. Over the head of the leading Gordon. Rebolt behind him to Greg, feigns a hand pass, drops it on the boot, Howell it bounce, it runs on, and they get their third goal. Normally, the goal brings a smile. I think Kenny's upset about that. Well, Kenny's a perfectionist. He's such a competitor. He'd want them playing the same way every minute, regardless of the scoreboard. That's what coaches do, don't they, Lee? They always want the well, perfect so. there's, there's also the element of, uh, the element of anything can happen. They're ten goals in front. Most of us unbiased observers think, how they could Richmond pick them up? And I'll tell you what, you're not picking that way in the coach's box. You're thinking of all the things that could go wrong in, in terms of the opposition taking hold of the game. So you reckon for him it's a long hour after half time? Yeah, yeah. To, to, to a degree. I mean, once you get up, if, if, if this is the score halfway through the last quarter, yeah. But it's a, it's a bit of anguish to keep the score, even though they're... Uh, He's still feeling better than David Hardy. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> so, both to Wines, to half forward. Hartler was at the back. Floston. G. Hartland's been one of many impressive players. Moore did brilliantly. Need left foot. Schultz. Oh. Over the top. Monfries. Well, this really hammers home the most remarkable first half of footy. If he goals here, it'll be the third biggest half-time lead in any final ever, and he does. So Monfries kicks his second. Have a look at that scoreboard. That'll be on a wall somewhere at Albert and Oval, I reckon, someday. I'm not sure anyone's played better football than that run no, this no. season. Haven't oh, seen yeah. it all, of course, but everything I've seen wouldn't match up with that. That was just silky. Yeah, it's just sent a big ripple through the top four, hasn't it? It's the history suggests you can't win the premiership from outside the top. A real inspirational skipper. Perhaps a consoling word. So away we go. The Tigers. Backs to the wall is an understatement. Stunning football in the first half from the power. Lobey, and he's again, Bogue hooks it down towards half forward. Blastone worked off the line of the ball. Well done, Monfries. Over the top, Corns, Need. Boat goes again. He's up to 21 possessions now. That was a beautiful pass, and on the end of it is even. Dennis, what about the start? Travis Boat, you just mentioned his first half that he had the 19 possessions. If you want to start the second half the right way for Port Adelaide, who better than your captain? Centre clearance and then followed up with a kick inside to Ebert. Great play by Boak. So Ebert, kick is on the way. It's good. Oh, we've read the book. They start as they finished. Oh, 
Well, particularly, they start as they start it. Yeah, that's right. As the, the centre bounce, uh, rather than have a spare man in defence, Richmond have got a seven-man forward line to make sure Port can have a spare defender. There were five in five in Port's forward half means there's going to be a lot of space. <laughs> so that's a problem. You try and stop their run off the off halfback by having even numbers behind the footy, but then you've got so much space for them to run into when they uh, when they flow forward. Started four and fifty on Newman, but they've got ten individual goal kicks now. The record for any team in any final ever is thirteen individual goal kickers. So Port with ten early in the third term. It's uh, just been remarkable. Miles started the match well. He got a free kick early. He got three free kicks within ten minutes. The well, lead just picked up on the fact that Richmond were prepared to go seven forwards. Port Adelaide just sent another person round. They're desperate to get a loose defender, so they've now got a four-man forward line. Port Adelaide. So there's going to be even more space for the power. So Niles winning another free, and Paul holding up a bit, Koch and Hodge building it away, Need slipped over, Morris couldn't get a handle. Shules, Gray, clever, Hodge, O'Shea. Just a big job for Ebert Floston. To the one guy, Dennis, I just thought of it, Pinnett, I hardly called him for Port today, I mean, he was brilliant the other night, I mean, he doesn't have to do a lot today, but... <laughs> I don't think he's required now, Bruce. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I even mentioned it, but it'll be a ball up. Oh, well, he was so good against Carlton, wasn't he? Well, when I just thought, last. I thought that bounce off half back. I, I haven't always... caught him doing that today, but everyone else has been doing it. He's just been one of those players amongst a really well organised back six, Bruce, that have set up well. Their structure's been perfect, and they've created those turnovers. And they haven't had to have a heap of the footy. They've just all joined in, all taken their turn. Sean Gregg getting a free kick, taken high. He's back inside the defensive 50. Rance into Mines. Ellis. So much of the football this season, but not today. Comes out towards halfback. Lost on. Tackled by Shaw's. Got a hand pass away. Ellis had followed up. Kicks towards the wing. Homsch. Great judgment. Releases Need. Looks inside the forward 50. Leads West off back. He'll run on West off and kick a goal. No, he won't. Too clever by half. So what he was trying to do then, I mean, that open goal, I reckon they've just landed the umpire's feet. Just a little low low yeah. kick that lands to the goal umpire's feet is always the best. I'm not sure what he was doing. That's a beautiful that was an optimistic uh, up the right side of the uh, outside of the foot. I would have thought he was uh, Stevie Motlop. That's the one. <laughs> Banana. That's, but that is West off, isn't it? Hey, again, an illustration of what Lee said about need. He doesn't need much of the ball for things to happen when he's involved. So Hooley, who has had a lot of it, Delidio with some good run this time to wear, which we haven't seen that, that yeah. fast Richmond play at all. Those outside runners for them have been non-existent. Martin did well there against the odds. Back to Edwards. Missed the target, or the original one. Now Delidio should kick a goal. Well, it wasn't finished off by Brett Delidio, but well done, Dustin Martin. He has gone and played that role that we've seen him play so much in their last nine wins. That one out, inside forward 50. He's so good at winning contests in that situation. Did it again then, but he's going to have to do it a lot in this second half. Good hard man, Bruce. Ray's well, been a target. Saw that body go hard against him. Meantime, Gordon behind the pack. Ryan slams it at Ellis, and as a result, picking it up with ease as Wingard to a contest, and Rance wins. That was good, body to body. Dashing defender takes off, goes to the other side of the ground. Rick tracks it towards the wing. He's a left footer, needs to align himself here. Waste some time doing it. Goes short, that's okay though. Back inside the corridor, Griffiths dropped the mark, even fumbled. Eventually it comes to Wines, wheels out of the pack, gets to West off. High ball out towards the other side. And running out and a boundary throw in. Yeah, Peter, just three kicks in the opening half. Not picking on him, he's such a great player, but. They've had uh, others doing that today. Westhoff, sensational early goal. And boys, I can confirm, Matthew White has been taken to hospital for scans. They are concerned that he's either broken his jaw or his cheekbone. Thanks, Tim. So that's, that's huge, isn't it? His pace is just part of the mix here. So Morris got it from Miles. Grigg, Conker. Still Conker. Foley, good kick, Revolt. Had very few chances. Mark here. So, 
Revolt yeah. off the step now. Good kick to the lead. Yo, Hartler got back. Broadbent. Still with Broadbent. And building it away. Your Mark Stevens from Seven News passed that on to us at half time about White. So oh, that's not good news. Oh. Greg. Back to Morris. Oh. Bounces one to Rance. He fumbles. How much confidence there now? Oh. Take it, Hale, get the free kick. That's the one thing they're leading is the free kick count. They're well up there. Damien Hardwick still making a point and good on him. That would have been a very tough half-time address. Move it on. Play on. So Rance plays on. Now he's a left footer, ran himself into trouble. He's tackled high again. Oh! Oh! It's an accident. Come around, just be careful. Time back on. Ah, so clumsy doesn't count. Yep. Well, and the kick's not good, so after that, eight, Wines, Gray, to Moore. So Moore on the ground, obviously, for White. Goes short and finds Wines. And then Wines off a step, even hard running. He's already kicked the goal in this quarter. Takes them on. Oh, yes! <laughs> He's done it again! Well, his dad was a good player, Craig. His mum was a terrific netballer, Christine Obst. Her father won a Brett McGarry medal, Bubbles Obst. And his uncle won four McGarry's. It's a reasonable lineage, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing. Like, when they had the ball out on the wing, you know that there were going to be a Port Adelaide player running forward of the footy to get to be the, the, to be the target player. Is it going to be Eve? Is it going to be Boat? Is it going to be Pollack? Is it going to be Gray? Just massive work rate from Brad Ebert. He's had a look inside, he's done the right thing, realised nothing on, and then the composure after a run like that to finish. Great uh, goal, great be, play, Port Adelaide. Might be something in this jumper, you know. They might demand they play <laughs> in it next week. How does it go with Purple? Gray, Moore, outside of the boot. There's trouble. Pollock runs down towards the 50, misses the target. Taken by Batchelor, he's lurking behind. Just burned off initially. Ellis, close to the boundary line. Needs some help, slips over. Nothing going right. Shouldn't laugh. Conker, incorrect disposal. Incorrect disposal. <laughs> oh, gee. Do things I love in football. A contest, it's not that today, but an exhibition it is, and it's a magnificent <laughs> exhibition of how to play the game. There you go, Dan Pinnard. I've been waiting, Pinnard. I've been waiting to call him. That time. To Hartlett, Hartlett, to Bo. Got him. Dylan! I've always Dylan. thought, take this the right way, uh, Lingy. I thought he was a poor man, yeah. Selwood, Bo, two poor years ago. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, poor he's a good man, Selwood, aren't you? Yeah, well, that? early on in his career, Selwood uh, had done a hell of a lot more than yeah. him, but folks coming home with a big same, charge. Same draft year, so they're the same age. Within a couple of picks of each other. And they play similarly, don't they? So, both belting to the full forward line. Mark taken by Rance. Take a metre. Oh, you take either one. Yeah. In a flash. It was a huge thing when Travis Boak made the decision to stay at Port Adelaide, to be that leader, to stand up and be captain. And what a job he's done. He's helped carry this team on his shoulders. Incredible young man. Rick in the back pocket goes to Miles. To Martin. None of their big names, really. They figured prominently this afternoon. There's a chance for one of them. Revolt, Conker. Backward of the centre circles. Morris pushes up. Ellis. Looks down towards half forward. Forced to kick with his left, though. It's not good. Well, me. Oh, well, <laughs> how good was that? Jonas comes yeah, away. Have one forward. It's Wingard. All the time in the world. Comes back on the left foot. Runs right to the goal line. And puts it through. And the little fellow again. Oh, hey, Leon, Jake Mead. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if he gets, a, he gets one disposal for that. That yeah. was just remarkable. No, he was. He did well. He thought his way through the contest, got tackled, got the hand pass up. And, but Chad Wingard ran into the open goal, but he wasn't just standing there for the last 30 seconds. It's the run from upfield to get yeah. get forward when they're needed, which is... Uh, He's this been terrific with guy, yeah. transition run, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, take a bow, Jakey Need. 
the strength to just gather that ball in the contest and not fumble it, but then somehow to get the handball out. That set up the Chad Wingard goal, the goal, the easiest of goals for him. Jakey Need, brilliant. Seven multiple goal scorers, ten individual. Ellis had it taken away, firstly by Boat. Westoff belting forward. Well, this is what the prison bars were all about. Port Adelaide were the most ruthless team and club you could imagine. I mean, that's what Foss Williams built the creed about. They were ruthless. They never gave another team an inch. And right now, they have... Well, they've tasted the blood early, haven't they? And they are really going for Gordon. Neat step. Good-looking kick to the pocket to marriage. Well done. Doesn't quite stick it. Tringove. Jonas. Well done to Homsch. What do you reckon Ken Hinckley's more happy about, Lee? The 17 goals or the three against? I think the three against, in a way, it's just because it's just your, your defensive mechanisms, and coaches coach that more than offense, I find. West off, puts it out of bounds on the floor. You wouldn't think Fiji and jumpers could play this well, would you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do like Justin, it. Justin, back here, please. Right away, right I'll away. i tell you one thing, they're going to be a very, very valuable merchandising uh, piece after this match today, aren't they? Yep, Mark goes back to Newman. They Stay look there, great. The black shorts even better. Ball goes inside the forward 50. And there's the spear again. He's done it well. Peeling off combinations of two sometimes. That time just flying over the top of two. Pittard runs the outer yeah. side, close to the boundary. Montfries and Hooley. Montfries getting a free kick. Just wondering if we could give Eddie a ring Eddie and find out. Find out if he'd let them wear it well, in, well, in the, next the week. Give a dark, a dark colour. Finding a, a lighter colour when they're the visiting time in Perth next week might, might be the, uh, the mm. challenge, and this might be the light colour jumper. Will make sense. Oh, should have nothing to do with Eddie Maguire and Collingwood. I'll say that. Well, start. Trengo kick to Holmes, and then Holmes off a kick. Well, Mark not taken there by uh, Pettit, who's come onto the ground. So the sub, Delidio, Foley. Delidio running hard, teasing, wanting Hurley, runs a long way. Good kick, good kick, goal. One little highlight, eh? We've seen Port Adelaide do that for the uh, for two and a half quarters. <laughs> they said, let's, let's see if we can get on board and run in numbers and be there to support. They couldn't get through the 50-metre line, but they got close enough to have a long shot. That one has been taken to hospital. That may have been the incident. Not sure. Nothing underwater about it. He was the tackler. Meantime, back in the middle. Trend Gove, oh, taken high as Gray. Got that, Ben. Inside the centre circles, wants to go. No real pressure. Carlisle, metres in the clear, goes back to Gray. Gray with Rance coming at him. Rance did well again, peeled off, but there's no stopping that. The use of the ball is just sensational. It was right from the start, wasn't it, Dennis? Yeah. Yeah. Still clearly remember Jay Schultz Jay. leading up right at the start of this game, Jay. just being hit, lace out. To do it under pressure again then, Robbie Gray gave the defender no chance. Gray is up to 20 possessions now. 15 seconds. So Need from about 35 metres, so skillful. He's got two. You like him for three. No easy kick. Gray is pushing it left to right. There you go. He knows that. He understands those factors. What a beautiful kick. Yeah, it's one thing to know the direction you want to aim the ball at. Uh, it's another to have the execution and the skill to do it. He's hit both, didn't he? He's a guy who only needs to know. <laughs> you need to know, <laughs> yeah. So he's had a goal in every quarter need. It just Gray's work again there. I mean, run and carry. The only surprise about Gray, he hasn't hit the scoreboard today. He's... Yeah, but gee, what an influence he's had. You're right, Bruce, but 20 possessions. It's been brilliant, brilliant. So he equals a career high. He's got a goal in each of the three terms need. I reckon he got three against Carlton on that night, so he's the leading goal scorer so far today. And Robbie Gray, 
bench is working overtime, so Port continue this ruthless approach. Boak, Hartlett, well done Martin that time, squeezing it out. Monfries just fumbling, good tackle coming in from Cotchen. Hooley, poor handball, Edwards, and now O'Shea to Wines, and then Wines very short, getting over the back of Moore. Edwards running, running hard, did well, Edwards. Bouncing, coming off, so Richmond trying the Port Adelaide game here. Martin, normally a good kick. Half volley, Hawks wraps up Gordon. Must have just hung on too long here. Hunt was in a good position. Angus! Well, he was leaning back in, wasn't he? <laughs> he probably made the most of it, but it might have been there. So let's hope he can kick a goal here for the Tiger fans. It looks good. Yep. And he has. Well, they haven't had a lot to cheer about. Today, the Tigers fans, they're just going to hope their team plays for pride now and is just strong to finish this game off. It's been a remarkable run. The nine games, nine wins in a row to make it here, make the finals. Port Adelaide have just shown why they were top of the ladder for a long part of the season, but Richmond have got to make sure they finish it off. It's going to be interesting to see how this season's reflected on. I mean, the disappointed last year's final against Carlton, something to talk about late in the match. Well, contrast again. What's going on on the left? A route. I must love their footy. They're yeah. still there. <laughs> Credit to them. They've been wonderful fans this season. Talking with Mick Malloy earlier today. He was in love with them. Martin goes back. Galidio peels off. Goes for a run. A couple of bounces. Three now. It's about 60 metres out. Lays it off. Ellis fell over. OK, though. Pettit. Now Grigg lowers the eyes but kicks it high. In front, Revolt, big hill. Oh, around the waist. Gee. Richmond, you got his arms around his waist. They're finding a few, aren't they? Back here, please. Well, this has been very picky, but Ken Hinckley will be extremely irritated with this little patch, allowing Richmond to be able to run and link up through the middle, getting goals kicked against them, but the fact they're being opened up will annoy Kenny. He'll want them playing this one right out. We see that paid off, and that's fair enough. Player only about 15 metres away. Apparently retarding him, but Rebolt kicks the goal. So a little flurry from the Tigers. Yep, it's their, it's their patch of the day, isn't it? I mean, Delidio probably started it with that running goal, didn't he, a few minutes ago? Yeah, yeah, no, they've started to win the ball a bit around the middle and bounced the ball off half back a few times when Port have actually got the centre bound uh, clues. I think the breeze has dropped a little bit too. The yeah. flags are still fluttering a little bit, but I think it's not nearly as strong as it was at the start of the game. We spoke at half-time about Ken Hinckley's message likely to be about good habits and playing the way that they want to be playing next week. He would not at all be happy with this little patch, but Richmond, to their credit, they've kept on playing. Port Adelaide have got to get back to the way they played in that first half. So Gray, brilliant handball to Moore. Not 15, Hartlett. Still with Hartlett. He's a hard man to bring down, Hartlett. Brilliant kick to Wines. She Hartlett, high draft pick. I reckon off the top number four. You just feel like he's blooming, isn't it? Hey Bruce, if you look at the disposal count, it's only about ten difference between Port Adelaide and Richmond. It's all about Port's efficiency and their methodology when they've gone forward. They've just been magnificent. Yep. Good point, Tim. So Mark's inside 50, a 19 to nil. And they have kicked for goal brilliantly today. The scoreboard reflects it. 19 goals, 6. We talked a lot. Tim talked about the win. You're in that pocket, Tim, before the start of the match. I mean, Port Adelaide have just nailed those goals, haven't they? Well, it, Tim just mentioned the efficiency. That's led to the fact they've been able to mark the ball inside 50, the 19 to 0 marks inside 50, and they've had shots at goal from really good positions. They've kicked unbelievably well. Oh. They've done everything right today, Port Adelaide. But just every time they've gone forward, it's been to really good parts of the ground. Lots of 
to like it. He's the youngest player out there today. Night, the only teenager out there today. He's a beauty. He, he has not fumbled at all today. He does not fumble in the contest, and he executes the skills so well. He's a finals type player. Oh, 181 close. points. Give it up. Buck. Coming up for his 25th possession. Brings it out wide, Montreux. Broadbent cruising past, he'll get it. Hooley comes to him, Broadbent does well, but Mead can't keep it in. Boundary throw in about 60 metres out from goal. Martin was 69 at half time. What set this game up was the flying star. 22 points to the lead at quarter time. Dazzling stuff from Port Adelaide in the opening half hour. West off just thumps it back to the boundary. It just one interesting stat that Port Adelaide have had 19 inside 50 marks, which gives you obviously a set shot at goal. Oh, Richmond have had none. Yep. No, I've not been able to generate one mark and have a, a set shot at goal. We just saw Corns and Cochin there. Gee, Corns has done another good job. Thir Cochin only the 13 possessions. Such a disciplined play for the team, Kane Corns. Horse kick smothered. Miles goes back to the Lidio. And then Boak out. Just thinking ahead. Uh, Tim, you talk about the stress test of playing Fremantle next week. When you play the Dockers, it's the stress test. Well, gee, Port Adelaide did give them some hope on what we've seen so far today. You feel like there might be five teams more with some hope. Maybe yeah. Boat getting from Gray needs a good bounce. Wingard's lurking, lurking, what? still lurking, still lurking. Oh. And hits a post. Oh, oh. Oh, I didn't think about using a team, mate. I've got to say that. <laughs> I know they were a long way in front, but there was plenty of players queuing up in the centre corridor for the feed off. And that's why they've got to push on here, Mac. They're just making sure they don't flirt with their form, as they say, sure. because they played on that Friday night against Carlton. And then went across to Perth. Still lost the game. Here's Hooley. Has a bounce. And his second. Looks inside the forward 50. Not much on. Third, fourth. Cross track, goes short, that's a good finish, and a nice mark, Griffiths, like a man in the gully, going back and taking it in both hands. Ken Hinckley will go down, they've increased their lead Thank since half time, but he'll have mixed emotions, because Thanks, in this term at least, the Tigers threaten it. He won't like the fact, Dennis, that even though they've kicked goals, it's been in a shootout form, end-to-end -end football, he'd want them back playing that defensive style that got the goals in the first half. Griffiths kick. This is for the near side. It's one of the uh, one of the numbers that probably illustrates that uh, caught about 26 talents to Richmond's uh, 34 as you get in the woods three quarter time. That's a really really low, like 20 20 tacks a quarter is really what a team is probably trying to generate generally. So a very low tackling game as it's uh, as it's called. Hey Lee, as a coach, when do you start thinking about next week from Port's perspective? I mean, this will be their second trip on the yeah. road to Perth in three weeks. Stay Which, out, I reckon right it would out. be now, Tim. I mean, the margin is now the game's gone. So you, whatever you could do, trouble is there's not a whole lot you uh, can do when there's a, the constant uh, interchange going on. And the fact they've already had to jump with their sub, Matty yeah, White. Yeah, so the they... Yeah, I, mean, a, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if some of their midfielders go and play a bit deeper forward. You get your midfielders in your Can middle of the ground just to try and spread the load as much as you can over your 22. Chaplin, third man up. The shade coming across the ground now. It was a, it was a hot start to this match. I mean, mid-20s probably, it felt really hot down there in the blazing sun. So it's been a high-intensity game in terms of not the tackling part, but the running power from Port Corn's clever. Wingard. Got it down the line. Good kick. Running hard, hard, and also Ebert. Can Shaws get it on? It's all held up now. Ebert running now to the goal square. Shaws deciding not to go there. And to go to the pocket. Well, this kick, he could go from here. I mean, he's got the leg. To goal from here, Hartlett. We were watching uh, in the warm-up Jared Pollock having shots from here. We expect him to just hang it out to the left and let that wind just bring it back in. He is every chance, this bloke. He's such a skillful young player and a beautiful kick of the footy. And it was just always a bit to the near. Just on, it's still 22. Almost the first the time for the game where Richmond got more defenders back than uh, Port forwards when there was ready for a set kick. That's the one thing that uh, Port ran back just as hard as they run forward. That's what's been really impressive about them today. Not just yeah. running forward. 82 points the margin. 
Loby just inside the boundary line. Marks the Martin kick. West off offers. Offers again. Plenty of time, though. Loby just lobs it. Down towards full forward. From behind, big leap by Griffiths. Off hands, though, runs away and goes out of bounds. West off still unamused about not getting the ball on the short pass. Demanding something of each other this afternoon. Still. So a throw in. Griffiths in front, Loby from behind. Wines going through at speed, coming out the other way as Hooley. Gets a bit on it, Hooley, too, which suggests that breeze has died a bit. Revolt oh. taken down, Carlisle. The original tackle, I think, was OK, and then got down fairly low, O'Shea. Easy, Nathan, easy. Easy, that's right. Easy. 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 Ball up. Thanks, Cam. So, Coming out this way. Pomch. Been good homage. He's highly rated at the club, Edwards. And the boundary throw in. This is the really hard point <laughs> from a Port Adelaide Keep coach's perspective is you just don't want any injuries Keep now, the but there's not a lot you can do about it. You can't tell the players the don't go at the contest <laughs> yeah. because it's too hell. Oh, they're just natural that they get their fierce competitors. And you can't really leave somebody on the interchange bench because that will affect another player who doesn't get a rotation. In the days before the heavy rotations, there you're halfway through the last quarter, you might get one or two of your more vulnerable players off, but you can't do that in the modern footy when that when really every player is playing a similar amount of game time. Loby in front, Wines, Ray, no way through. Morris got him. Wingard. At the base of that is Conker. Wingard now at the base of things. Ball up. A bit unlucky not to get a free for in the back there. Wingard. Bill in the blocker. Channel 7 presence there as well, and he must be a very proud man, Koshy, at the moment. Holding Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide. Free kick to Moore, is it? Andrew Moore. He's the sub. Holding. He's joined the feast. He's just forward of the wing. He is very short. Broad bent, a good running defender. He is. Anthony! Anthony! One of those guys that's just got Move better each year, Broad bent. Versatile. So Port just slowing it down here. Wines back to Broadbent. Right on the deck, right there. Corns directing some traffic and now wanting it short. 291 games, eh? I mean, Lenny Hayes 297, Dean Cox 290. Only 11 players have got to 290 and not gone to 300. Corns will get to 300 next year. West off, uncontested in the end. Uh, oh. Comes to fall forward, Hartlett's there, and Ebert, danger, Hartlett, clever enough, getting back to Lidio, he's had a good term to Lidio, switching, good handball, Martin over the top, Grig had to wait, got a bad bounce, Richmond have got numbers, Foley, still Foley, gets it you to mate. Grig, and Grig then down the line to a one-on-one, -on -one. Gordon versus Pittard, Pittard winning the battle, and then playing it to himself, and then toe poking cleverly. O'Shea, Pollock, hard against the boundary line. Goes down towards the pocket, really get nicely. Grimes comes across, takes blood the rule. mark, and there's a blood rule. Oh, oh, not hard to find. That nose yeah, is Foley. smashed. Oh. David Foley coming off the ground. <laughs> It's a surprise that nobody had noticed. <laughs> he's been, he's had it about two minutes ago, and he's been out there, and he actually looked at the umpire a couple oh, of times. The umpire didn't look at him. That's where it happened. And he catch very hard. Oh, yeah, mate, thank you. His mum, Sue, and his dad, Dennis, are here today to see Nathan play his first final, so <laughs> not a great moment for a parent to see that bit. No, eh? they wouldn't like that at all. That's nasty looking. How many people on the street could walk away from that? That's the remarkable thing about these athletes, isn't it? Grimes out of defence. Long ball, Loby in best position. Reaches over the top, gets a fist on it. Edwards, Delidio runs again. Into a dead end this time. Brings it back towards the middle. Marriage. Now Conker accelerates. 70 metres out. Good kick too. Finds Newman. So can the veteran will play again next season. Kick a goal from here.
Byron's gone. The margin 82 don't points. It was 69 at the major break. Ken Hinckley already, I'm sure, in his mind, racing ahead to next week. Nathan Foley, meantime, has a memento. Newman's kick misses from the near side. So three-quarter time, 122 plays 41 in the first elimination final, fought rolling towards next week. And also, our members and supporters have been absolutely magnificent from here in Adelaide through to my grandson Oscar in Hong Kong who's watching the coverage. You know, everyone has really got behind this club and a passion. <laughs> it's great to be part of it. It's inspiring. Good it's on you, Koshi. That's a few bases there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a TV host, isn't he? <laughs> I wonder if any Victorians <laughs> might argue with the best stadium in Australia That's called by Koshi. <laughs> Payback for the jumper. <laughs> You can do it now. Margin. 81 points. Wines fancies himself as a ruckman. Knocks it down. Monfries. Broadbent. Westoff. Pittard. He's not a right footer. That shows. It bounces. Out of bounds in front of Need. We'll have a boundary throwing out there. Wonderful start by Port. And they have not looked back. Mark Williams there, of course, uh, coached the power to their. Premiership in 2004. Bruce, this is a real reality check for the Tigers, isn't it? Uh, they're playing the fifth side in the competition today. Huge jump from where they are eighth into actually being a real contender. And they're going to be, like a lot of sides in the off-season, really keen and aggressive in trying to rebuild some talent or get some extra talent into their list. And Tim, so how, it's going to be interesting too, Tim, because last year the devastation of the loss to Carlton... But, this is off the back of yep, such a good story from them, so you wonder how they're going to just respond to today. Good mark by Ellis. I mean, is this worse than last year losing to Carlton? They've worked so hard to get here, haven't they? Well, the margin has been, but I think it was always going to be a tough ask. So just, 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 you can't string together win after win after win, clearly, and they've played a good opposition today, and unfortunately just haven't really been able to cope. But losses, losses like this in finals hurt. They hurt really badly. Mark's there. Headed, Hunt against the boundary line, started as the sub. Jonas over the top, too high. Advantage won't be taken, or will it? Oh, gee. <laughs> That's friendly. Conker lines up and misses. Well, Conker had a bit each way, I think. Almost dared the umpire to let him go, having really slowed down. But that's got the football. We Let's mentioned, miss. sorry, Dan, we mentioned that Port Adelaide maybe would start managing a few of their players. Their current deep forwards are Chad Wingard and Robbie Gray. So maybe just wanting to keep those two guys out of the traffic for this last quarter. No injuries wanted there. Carlisle drives it across the ground. Hartlett has been very good. Riggers taken down. Strong tackle by Hodge. Oh, oh, gee. Oh, sorry. So, play on. Team to be high, so Greg Short. Stay there, Ollie. Deledio certainly lifted in the third term. Had a, a goal kicking into the season to Lydia, and he puts Revolt in a goal scoring position here. This is where Need basically scored from in the third quarter. Hartler was more up against the fence, wasn't he? So 59 goals for the year for Revolt. It's a pretty accurate set shot. Not quite working back. And the behind. Just thinking about Richmond, they've only won two finals in the last 32 years. I mean, it, it's been a, it's been a tough, tough time for the club over a Make long sure. stretch. Where you are. We laugh about. Well, we don't laugh about it, but it's part of the, I guess, the folklore of Australian footy, well, isn't it, Richmond? Well, it's got to be their next step as far as their growth. They need to break through that barrier, win a final, get themselves into a couple more finals. Then that experience grows within the players. And they get used to playing in finals. And that's when they really take the next step and become a good team. Hops oh, has touched on Root there to West off, and he's gone out of bounds. Off hands. Off hands. So a throw in at the interchange gates. West off, not sure about all of that, but it was nearly cool. Griffiths, Trengove, Trengove to a pack of port players, Ebert. 
Pollock. There he is again, loves a bounce. Loves his left foot, comes back on it, drives it down towards half forward. Ebert out numbered. Put to ground by Ellis. Charging up Gray. Should have tackled him. Still Ellis made. went back. And they've got a chance. Rance gave it to Delidio. Just drops it into Hooley. Hooley at centre half back. He'll take a good kick from here. He's looking for a long option. This high ball goes just beyond centre wing. Gordon did well. He read it best. And then off a step goes to Revolt again. So Jack just getting a few chances late. He's in the other pocket now. And there's... Uh, he's a hard marker, Hinkley. <laughs> He'd like to smile, but it's very hard to smile in the middle of a game. And Revolt improves the angle and I think gets the goal. So he's kicked two. He's the multiple goal scorer for the Tigers. Well, it's kind of a, a funny quarter this for Port Adelaide when you're in this position. You want to do all the right things, you want to play the game out, but that real genuine motivation has gone. They know that they've got the game won and uh, can't help but have a bit of an eye yeah. into next week. I think it does. I mean, absolutely. I mean, there normally is a percentage issue in the home and away series, but there's no percentage issue clearly in finals. And you can't help but starting to think forward, think a week ahead. Margin 73 points then. The Tigers' biggest losing margin in a final. 89 points back in the 90s. Lobie tried to get it, missed it. Marich, Delidio, searching kick, but searching for whom is the question. Jonas goes back. He's been a wonderful sweeper back there. Carlisle, and now Homsch. Perfect kick. Only one man could get that, and he was wearing prison bars. Monfries. This has been a big plus for Port because Monfries, great last year. Hasn't played a lot of footy this year, just 14 games. It's third consecutive game today. It's only the third time he's done all year, so continuity for him and he's played a big part. Yeah, and he's one of those players who, who doesn't need leader. to get a heap of it. We were speaking about Jakey leader. Need, not needing to get a heap of the footy to have an impact. Monfries, he can have half a dozen eight kicks and kick you three or four goals and in a final, a tight final next week potential, uh, against Fremantle could be the difference. Good stuff by the Tigers there and then Newman, lovely kick to Gordon. Stay there. So a very different game being played right now, isn't it, to what we've seen for most of the first three quarters. Gordon, short and good target. No, he won't like that, the coach. No, this, is, uh, this will start irritating him even more, Dennis. He'll understand that they're not going to be at their absolute 100% best. He has that sort of empathy with his players, but he won't like what he's seeing now. Mark's inside 50. Lee told us 19 to 0. Now it's 20 to 5. Just come back. Thanks. Yeah, that's OK. Well, he's been a big success story, hasn't he? Lyles. Does he get the goal? It's close and just fading. He's had a really good year. Macca, one thing I've really noticed down here at ground level is how wide... Port Adelaide are prepared to go when they attack. The players almost come to the boundary line, and I reckon that's going to be a real factor when they play Frio next week oh. on a tighter ground, Subiaco. We know that that's a narrower ground, and they may not just be able to find those same spaces that they can find here. Martin. Oh, well marked. Revolt coming at full tilt, control the football cleanly. We always think of Subi as a big ground, though, Tim. It's interesting because it's not as big as this, I don't think, do you? It's long. Yeah. It's long, but it's narrow. Yeah. narrow yeah. Here's the problem. Yeah. Boke seems to be OK. What a game he's played. If he could take somebody to the bench and let him rest, I'd be sending Boke there. They're going to be an absolute key next week. So the revolt. It's better too. He set the tone early, Boke. No question about that. Even after half-time, he fired up again, and this one misses out to the right. He's had the 10 clearances today, Travis Boke. That equals the number of clearances he's had in all his other finals. Uh, he's been phenomenal. 26 possessions. Which is the third. Well. They've had 30 as a team, so he's had a third of the clearances. Wingard held up, so just missing the Pollock target there. So Ellis, he played in five previous finals, so he averaged two. Now Newman got a good leg. Pitar gets back, doesn't take the mark. Edwards gets the goal. It's a little bit of junk time for Richmond. 
still, again, we come back to that Port Adelaide way of playing. They would want to be just having some sort of momentum, some sort of form going to next week. The way they've played all game has been that good. That They have that momentum anyway. But dropping a simple mark like that, just letting through a goal there and letting Richmond have shots at goal in this last quarter, it doesn't create the sort of good habits that they want going in to Fremantle next week. One of the rare mistakes we've seen from the poor play, just a skill error. And Ken, Ken Hickley wants this game over now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. The yeah. sooner the better. Nothing to gain now from Port's point of view, only something to lose. That's right. Gray. Oh, that was interesting. Oh. A snap in the NFL. He's, he's arguing it too, <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> <That's how I laughs> it. We've watched that again. The hand pass was quicker than the eye. Oh, it was. Well, sort of. <laughs> he got a fist on that. Oh. Robbie, Robbie. Marriage has got it. Four of the centre circles, told to go, and they're finding men in space now. Not that time, though. Punched away. Martin gets the crumb, goes short. Rebolt again. Rebolt putting his fingers under that. The umpire in perfect position. So they've suddenly thrown the switch port in the wrong direction. They've had enough. Kenny might do a he might do a Malcolm Blight here at some stage this afternoon. He makes his walk out. Oh. May have hit the turf on further inspection. I'm giving, Jack, Rob, I'm giving Robbie Gray the benefit too, yeah, Dan. Also hand. indefinite handball. Oh. Shouldn't okay. penalise someone so skillful, I reckon. It's a revolt. He's got another one. He's got three this afternoon. He's sticking at it, providing a target. There's that Robbie Gray handball. I mean, the, just the what used to be the traditional handballer for most of the last century. I mean, players are handballing over their hill kinds of things. And the theory of the clenched fist off a platform hand, I guess I guess it was that. It was just was an unusual other, way of doing it. Was the other hand moving? That, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, the platform hand is yeah. clearly moving yeah. most of the time in modern footy. I think any handball through your legs, young boy, think that must be a throw. <laughs> Not possible. So the Tigers, three last quarter goals. So Jack Revolt, three, very different to Buddy Franklin's three yesterday. <laughs> Boak. Marich. And that ball not coming out in the ball up, so. Coming out this way, guys. Have a look at that. So Tigers, if you just look at that in isolation, so gee, they've come home hard. How many minutes to go, Lee? I'm just trying to work out your theory, minutes and goals, but... <laughs> no, I think that was gone about halfway through the third quarter, Mac. Uh, <laughs> just checking. Let it, let it, let it go, He's go. got another theory, yeah, too. That thing is only when you can count them on one hand, <laughs> no, not when you can count them on two hands. You've got a doctorate, of course. You've got another theory. As you finish, so do you start the following yeah, there's week. There's always an element of that. That's something I always believe in. And that's a theory that Ken Hinckley subscribes to as well. That's why, as we've been saying, this would just annoy him a little bit. Stay there. Talk about training there. form. Yeah, he'd, uh, he'd be talking about playing form as well and the way that the team plays. So Corn spreading it wide to Carlisle. So much fitter this year, Carlisle. O'Shea, he was the man that came in for Impey. It's going to be fascinating. Do they play Impey next week on Ballantyne as they did last Play-off. week? Ebert has run so hard. Father a terrific player, mother a great netballer, uncle a legend. Oh, yeah! What we like. Talk about legends, <laughs> this young guy is already Wingard. How, how long did he hang for? Well, it was just a jump, I don't think he jumped on the back of the pack, he just jumped. The, the power, I know he could get his, oh, uh, his shit brilliant. on the shoulder of Delidio to hold himself up. It's only mark of the year, isn't oh, it? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, he's had a great match, can he kick a third goal? Not quite coming back. He's got a fair case for uh, Mark of the Year anyway, I yeah. think, Bruce. It's why he's so good. He's brilliant on the deck, but he is outstanding in the air as well. He's a unique talent, isn't he? Best and fairest last season. 38 goals now this season. In midfield, Ellis sold Miles into trouble. Boak trying to wrestle his way out of there. It spills back to Weebert. 
Give it to Trengove. Time to kick now. Trengove a high one inside the forward 50. Rance in front. Schultz gave a contest. Loose ball. Well done by Miles over the top. Ebert. Right on the 50. The umpire says holding the ball. Dive on it. Wow. Put a lay free. Calm down, Ricky. <laughs> Give it to him, please. Mark's there. <laughs> Yep, Ricky right Pennant having a bit to say. Hand pass comes across to the long kicking hit art towards the square, and the mark is taken Clean down there 10 metres up by Hulu. Right Dennis, right speaking of Ricky Pennant having a bit to say, uh, I did read that Trent Cotchett said the best sledge he ever heard was when Pennant was in at Melbourne and claimed that Cotchett was the worst captain to ever play AFL footy. Yep. And now they're playing together, so he doesn't mind having a bit of a chat out in the field. He's probably got an opinion on the toss there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one to live down when you go to the club, isn't it? So here's Tringo, banging it back in the forward 50. Chaplin just overran it. Griffiths, well, he had it a while. It'll probably be a ball up. Ball not quite out, still not quite out. Now it is, little gift. Corns winds with that strong body of his. Delidio short to Grigg, gets it to Cotchen, and then Cotchen can't quite get it over O'Shea's head, Hartlett, now he's a penetrating kick, Hartlett, short, Ebert, Mark taken, but not far enough, and Newman in there, still with Newman, toe poking it away, probably to the disadvantage in the end, Moore would love a goal, his brother of course played for the Tigers, Pollock, oh, no. ball bouncing, Richmond was sort of waiting, which one will take it, and a boundary throw in. Mark Williams, four premierships in these prison bar. Guernsey's for the Magpies and his father, well, he was involved in 15 collectively as a coach and also as a player. Mixed emotions, I'm sure. He's a tiger at the moment, but the stand out there, on the other side, named by Australian football and this ground in particular, after his dad, hey. under pressure, Pittard goes back. Quite a tackle, now it's with Miles, finds Conker. Some great cricket names Gee. on the stands here as well. And now Conker's away, no one inside the forward I 50. Think Hartlett's done his hammy, I reckon. Or so cramp, or bad or cramp. Or oh, cramp will be much yeah, better. Hopefully. <laughs> so Griffiths, good tackle, O'Shea. Sorry, Dan, about that, but... No. And a ball, so there's Hartlett. Gee, this is big. Good tackle, ball pin, ball pin. Thanks, Angus. Going straight back. So marriage. Tiger's still getting it out. There's Pillar. Wines, good hands to Boak. With Dash again, his characteristic today. Wingard, nice half volley by Moore. Back to Wingard. Sends it down towards half forward. Taken by Shules, looks inside the forward 50, lobs it long. Gray leads back. Can he find it? Yes, he can. Gotta be 50, doesn't matter, of course. Gotta be 100. That'll be 150. That'll be up the bank. That's silly, Alex. Hartland looks OK, too. They're actually not doing a hamstring test. They're just rubbing his hamstring, so obviously it's just a bit of lactic acid. Walk away. Walk away. They said it was garbage time. Popping it through. Robbie Gray. As the tension and frustration spills over. Like, I think uh, Ranch actually, the, that yeah. one contest I suspect with, which would probably run as the Ranch Shields. No, still, he's still next year, okay? Johnny. Shields has got a couple of goals, run into open goals, etc. But the Ranch Shields match up, the Ranch has done well in yeah, that for sure. Let's have a look at Hamish Hartlett here. It, just, it looked for all money like it was a torn hammy, but the fact that he's getting it massaged now, as oh. Tim said, it's got to be a great sign. The physios and docs wouldn't risk massaging what they thought was a hamstring. So hopefully just cramp for Hartlett. He's been terrific today. He's been terrific all year. And he's going to be important again next week. Well, they've lost White, you'd think, for sure, haven't they? Matthew White and his run because of suspected broken jaw. So Gray, the 11th individual goal scorer. Corns beautifully weighted handball. Boak quickly to the pocket. Gray, well done, though. Well, initially well done by Rance, Gr uh, rather Grimes and Rance, and now Gray. It's funny Bruce used to say about Matty White. Up, the fact if it's up, up. a scandal, hopefully nothing's wrong up. at all, but 
If it's anything broken, yeah, you back. almost want it to be a cheekbone yeah. because potentially you could play with a fractured cheekbone. Certainly could play with a broken jaw. But the players, play. Matthew yeah. Richardson. Yeah. yeah, Matthew Richardson. I don't think missed a game when he fractured his cheekbone a few many years ago. Did you get your cheekbone fracture from? Was it I Dean did. I, I ended up uh, on Dean Solomon. I ended yeah. up missing two games with that, but. The argument he could have actually played without missing a game. Boundary throw it. Marriage taps it down. Boak with close quarters. Corns, Wines. Gray to Broadbent. Long kick Broadbent. We mentioned him before. Long kicking defender. Good running defender, but that time he's offline. Well, at some stage, if you run as hard as Port did and chase as hard as Port did early in the game, it probably catches up with you, but it's certainly caught up with them now. Pettit. In defence, picks a high one up towards the wing. Trengove launches himself off hands. Well done by Trengove. Knocks it forward. Taken high. Delidio will get a free. Easy, Jackson. Easy. Go through, go through, go through, go through. Delidio just forward of one half back. Goes short and uh, finds Miles. Oh! Short again to Martin. No impact today, Martin, is he? No, no he hasn't. Uh... He's had the 25 possessions, but just not the 25 possessions we've seen from him in this run to the finals. So Rance to Chapman, Pettit, who's on for Batchelor, oh. came on a while back. Moore, of course, came on a lot earlier for White. So yeah. a bit of an up and under. Revolt trying to get involved. Broadbent just goes oh, yeah, across sorry. and takes the mark. Short. Hodge. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to Don Cassisi about a week ago, and he said that they have an internal review of defenders at the club, and Homsch was the highest-rated defender for the year at Port Adelaide within the group. I think I'm allowed to say that. He didn't say it was uh, in-house. Uh, he's highly, highly rated here. Ellis. Little give by Grimes. Gee, that used to be holding the ball. Boundary throw. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Just stand up, stand up. I love watching Kane Collins. This game's been over for a long, long time, but he has yeah. not let up on Trent Cotchin. Oh! And he's going to get a free kick here. Has to. Just, just keep an eye on Ollie Wines. So he's a little bit concerned about his hamstrings. I'm not sure whether or not it's just cramped too, but he's been leaning over and actually stretching. Yeah, he wants a massage. So looks like there's a lot of tired port players out there. It has been a hard-running game. In warm they conditions. They better be careful now because they are sitting ducks. I mean, the frustration from the Tigers you, makes it dangerous for Port, if that makes sense. Get embroiled in something that they don't need to be. Pettit, interesting kick to the bright sunshine. Rance, Hooley, decides to have a bounce, runs around the outer side. Along that wing, Conker, that was a good mark. Runs away from O'Shea, short one on the lead. Griffiths wheels around, looks inside the forward 50. On the lead again, it's Revolt, left it behind Carlisle. Split the difference, with a bit of dash, gave it to Ebert. Ebert the short one, and Jonas decides to slow it down. Probably the best policy. There doesn't appear to be too much run in these Port legs right now. Dennis, you make a really good point about Port Adelaide players not getting sucked into anything. I reckon the Port Adelaide runner will be working overtime in this last four or five minutes. Just to say, keep calm. We've still got next week. Don't get involved in anything that might put your spot in the team in jeopardy for next week. Even if they pull a gun. <laughs> I think that was pulled early by the power, don't you? <laughs> I think so. Jonas. They've had eight multiple goal scorers, Port. It's the second most ever in any final. West Coast have got the record of nine. And that was in the 94 grand final. Ebert to Boat. No one better than Boat today. Would you agree? No, outstanding. I think someone has to get it in the first place to start it off, and uh, Boat uh, led that part of the game. To full forward and belted away. And a boundary throw in. So the crowd, third biggest ever, ninth time over 50,000. Five times that was achieved at Amy Stadium in 23 years. So it has been a, one of the remarkable stories of the year. Just like Richmond's nine in a row, but the Adelaide Oval in its own right has been something very special this year. Edwards outnumbered O'Shea around quickly. Running out of space, Pittard aligns himself to the goals. Gray over the top, almost the mark, spilled it. 
And Hooley rushes it across the line. 131 plays 63. Under three minutes of playing time remaining. Hooley very close to the boundary line, and Newman takes the mark. Thanks, Jared. He's all right. So just going through the motions. It's been that way for a long time, really. Newman frustrated with his teammates now. No one to kick to. Up towards the wing. Bounces off the chest of Moore. Broadbent goes back looking for Ebert. Ellis. Now Martin runners inside. Alex to go back inside the 50. And what a wonderful mark that was. Wonderful concentration by Wingard. He's the complete package. And he goes to Westhoff. So Westhoff deep in the pocket. For everybody's sake, needs to run as much time off the clock as he can. Maybe even kick it backwards. Kick's going to great, Dennis, for a push, I think, rather than the mark. So. All oh, right, OK. I was looking back for something to kick it to. So Gray's got the footy. And his body control in the air there, Chad Wingard. Brilliant. Not so good, that kick from Gray. Misses to the near side by quite a bit. He wishes he was, if he wasn't playing AFL football, of course, that he could be an NBA player, Chad Wingard. You, Imagine he could do anything that he put his mind to very, very well. He's uh, got a rare gift, hasn't he? He might need an extra foot or two, though, to play NBA. <laughs> so Martin, Marich, good hands, good late chance here. Gordon, the recipient, and stretching and taking the mark. It's a good story, Gordon. He was on the Sydney list. He played SNFL here for North Adelaide, coached by Josh Franco. And didn't wasn't on any list for a year or two, and he's been a regular late in the season, hasn't he? Played a lot off, uh, a lot as the sub, hasn't he? But yeah. He's been uh, always gets some impact when he has come on off that sub. So he can kick a second goal here, Lee, and he does. So Richmond get up to ten. So a couple to Gordon. Revolt's got three. So Wingard with a couple today, need with three, but Wingard's two big marks in the last quarter. What about this one? He has jumped up on Delio Shola. Sometimes players clamour up, but he just jumped up and held his position in the air. And this one, just the vertical leap, Great eh? leap, great leap, great power. Well, you had him in your top seven at one stage, Lee. I mean, yeah. his impact early was remarkable, wasn't yeah, it? Well, it's, the, it's how much... Did he, how often does he have the impact? He just does... Uh, Remarkable feats on the on the footy field. It's only how, how the volume or how often he's involved in the game. I guess is the difference with him at the moment and some of the other more prolific uh, medium-sized players. So Port go back to Perth. Another go at Fremantle. Boak out of the middle. We've done that for quite a while. More Boak. Knew where the help was. Goes to Wines. Wines swings it across the ground. Going back Jonas. Good judgment. Takes the mark. Stripped of it for late. So they've kicked since half time. What's that? Seven goals, eight goals. The Tigers. Jonas. Well, we've seen this. This is familiar. Pollock takes off a couple of bounces. Goes through the centre square. Has this for having legs still. Runs very high on him. Corns into the oncoming Ellis. Back comes Gray. So much of the footy this afternoon. Westhoff stood up in the tackle. Marriage gave it to Martin. Clever handball to Grimes, to Deledio, and Richmond might get another one here. Griffiths could go all the way here. Look at this. Just launches a goal. <laughs> wow. From way inside the centre. But that is not reflective of what happened here today. Port just killed them today. They really did. They were brilliant. So they take the Dockers on at Subi. And the ticket train comes to a halt.
So let's go down to Tim Watson, and he's with the Port Adelaide captain.